Welcome to Wargroove. In this episode, we're going to do an updated tier list. Now, this tier list is specifically for competitive play, and it's specifically for the Groove of War 5 World Tournament. These are my predictions for the best possible picks and bans for the tournament. Now, so far, the tournament format has been announced. Each player is going to get four bans. With four bans, that means up to nine commanders, because there's one perma ban, could be banned off. So you really have to think about what's good, what's bad, what counters what, what the tiers are, what people are likely to play. So this tier list is specifically for the current competitive format. Let's get started. Alright, so obviously we need to begin with Yoda. Um, now I'm going to put Yoda directly in the king seat of double S tier because Yoda is broken as hell. By the way, how are we scoring these commanders? Ease of use, ability to reposition, assassination potential, Stronghold Rush or Backdoor Potential and Other Utility are the main factors we're considering. Yoda is not easy to play. I'd say that to play Yoda you have to be good, even better than average to play Yoda well. But when you can play Yoda well, he breaks the game. He has everything. He's not super easy to use, but with 45 minutes you can figure it out. He has perfect reposition, excellent assassination, some of the best backdoor in the game, an insane utility, you can't trap him, he's fast charge, he has early damage, he can nuke your army. Yoda has everything and scores top marks in every category, and he is perma-banned for the tournament for that reason. Don't be afraid though if you're a casual player, Yoda's fine for casual play, unless you're a competitive player, he's not that big of a problem. But in competitive play, he can be abused to all hell and just wreck the game, and for that reason, he's auto-banned in Groove of War 5. Alright, let's talk about S tier. Obviously, Doggo has been quite a controversial character. Doggo is kind of like League's Riven. He's probably one of the hardest commanders to play, but he, despite the really high skill cap, he's very strong when you get the hang of him. In fact, in Groove of War 4, Doggo had the worst win rate of any commander starting off in the first few rounds, but he was constantly picked or banned after that when you got to, like, the top 12 players. Um, Doggo is really hard to learn to play and really difficult to play well but once you can play him well he's probably the current king of s tier some folks say he's borked some folks say he's overtuned but still fair game in either event he will be allowed in the tournament but a likely ban from anyone who's not comfortable with him. That being said, a word of advice, you might not need to ban Caesar against someone who's never played Caesar before. They're probably just going to get wrecked and have no idea what they're doing. Even really good players who have never played Caesar are not going to know what to do with Caesar. That being said, against a Caesar main, definite ban. Let's talk about Nuru. Now, Nuru is interesting because the meta has completely changed. Although Nuru is super famous for being able to do this. Summon Treb. Her groove might as well be Summon Treb at this point. Pay 2,000 gold and get this Goober Nuke. The real reason you want the Trebuchet is to get Instacrit on a commander or a stronghold and just deal tons of damage when you get it in critical range. That's awesome. It's even more devastating on the Stronghold, check this out. So because of that, Nuru is scary. However, there aren't going to be that many Trebs on these maps. Trebs will be soft banned or hard banned on... Um, hard banned, I think, actually, not even soft banned, on a lot of the maps in Groove of War 5. Meaning Nuru's main gimmick won't exist. At medium charge, she's already in the area where we can question whether or not she's still Borked. There are some maps that don't have exposed win cons where Nuru is super even to begin with, and now without Trebs, she can't really cheese as well. So you're really going to have to rely on some of her more gimmicky cheeses, like Summon Balloon, Summon Knight, or just make trades, and her trades suck at medium charge. Even if you summon a mage to kill a dragon at medium charge, you paid 800 gold for that. So did you really gain anything? It's not clear. For that reason, we're going to put Nuru in S tier, but she's questionable. She might not be a ban if you don't have Trebs and the win cons are not exposed. You might want to leave her opened and let your opponent waste their money. But if you do have Trebs and exposed win cons, she's a definite ban. Beware of rushes. Speaking of commanders, uh, yeah, there's no segue here. 
Ragna. Ragna has dominated competitive play lately. Ragna is pretty much the most common pick ever, and there's a good reason for that. Ragna is easy to use. In terms of ease of use, Ragna is the easiest used to commander there is. Her groove is stupidly straightforward, just like Ragna. You groove, you jump, it deals tons of damage, you go in with your army. Plan it so you don't die, and you're good to go. In terms of the other categories, repositioning, she can front switch when she grooves, by herself, and immediately attack everything when she lands. As a result of that, her repositioning is amazing. And in two front maps, Ragna is the best commander you could possibly pick. In terms of assassination, she's okay. She does damage, and does damage to the units around the commander to let you kill them easier. She's not the best assassin, but she's great at it. In terms of backdoor, same thing. She can jump behind the stronghold, do damage to it, damage the units around it, you can go in on it. So she's a good assassin, a good back door. she's got good utility in that she kills your army, great repositioning, and is the easiest commander to use. I would ban Ragna almost 100% of the time in Groove of War 5 unless you want to use Ragna yourself. Always ban Ragna against newer players, because Ragna is going to be their go-to. Everyone knows how to use Ragna, get that off the... just, just, just ban it, just ban it. Koji? We have a similar problem. Koji is basically a more difficult to use Ragna. Koji is a little bit slower, which makes them a little bit worse than Ragna when you're talking about on the clock. Now these balloons are, well, they're really tanky. But when you're playing from behind, your opponent can overwhelm them with anti-air, making them a little bit less tanky and less useful. Also, you won't be able to use them if your opponent has a sword wall. For this reason, Ragna is not only easier to use than Koji, but you can play Ragna from behind, so she's basically better than Koji. What is Koji better than Ragna at? Koji is better at assassinations. If you do Koji Bomb, Koji Bomb, and Koji Attack, you do 90 road damage to a commander on one side, just one side exposed. This makes Koji one of the best assassins in the game after Caesar and Yoda. For this reason, Koji is really powerful and the bombs can act as a mini weaker Ragna groove in a pinch to take out a powerful unit, though it kind of sucks to use them that way and that's usually a desperation play. Still, because of the, how tanky the bombs are and how assassiny Koji is if you try to push into the bombs, Koji is an S rank, no question, and something you might want to consider banning if you have a ban slot opened. Alright, Vesper. Now, Vesper is weird. Welcome to the dark. I put Vesper low tier in my previous tier list, but we absolutely have to consider that Vesper has been taken up by some very high level players to do some very scary things with stronghold pushes. If you can get a golem anywhere near the opposing stronghold, they cannot let your golem next to it because that's an automatic two-turn, two-golem hit on the Stronghold. Same with Dragons. Um, you can't do it with Vesper herself, but you can do it with, like, um, Golem and then into Night Crit, for example. You could do Golem, Night Crit, follow up with Archer, that's a kill. So you cannot have a single side of your Stronghold exposed at any time, or Vesper can tap it and move her army into position to hit it again on the second turn. And Vesper herself can be on the other side of the map when she does this. Now Vesper is really hard to use, because aside from the Stronghold Rush, she has two other gimmicks that are both also hard to use. She can smoke and then surround an enemy champion and kill it over two turns, which is hard to do. Or she can use the smoke for one really good turn of trading, which is really hard to do. Because of all of Vesper's plays, even her cheese are high level, I wouldn't recommend banning Vesper except against really high level Vesper player. But otherwise, her gimmicks make her a definite threat to be aware of. Now, let's talk about Valder. I used to put Valder in S tier. I'm not going to today, and there's a reason for it. The meta. That's right, the meta. The meta is really important in the current map meta. Valder isn't as good. Valder is powerful because Valder can abuse the economy to his advantage. Valder can make you play from behind from turn 5. Can make you pay play with 200 gold less, allowing Valder to build units you don't have access to can change the way the game is played, can force you to play differently. But Valder can't do that right now. In the maps I've been seeing lately, Valder does not have the ability to get ahead like that. There are no plays, there are no super openings, there's nothing. Maybe someone will discover some, and of course we haven't seen the maps for Roof of War 5 yet. 
If there is a good Valder map, that absolutely changes things, and Valder goes back to S tier. But because Valder is map situational right now in this new meta, we've got to put him in A tier. Alright, now, Wolfar. Wolfar is another one I put in S tier, but then they fell off hard, and that was because the meta favored slow charge commanders. But the meta is shifting back in favor of fast and medium charge commanders. In fact, you saw it in my match with Sequoia just a moment ago, if you were watching the stream, or if you're seeing this on YouTube, you didn't, but the point is, medium charge commanders will now actually matter. They will actually get groove and can use it before slow chargers in the new map meta. Um, it was sort of broken a little bit in Groove of War 4, where the maps let everybody get groove before the battle started, so naturally the Ragnas and Kojis had a huge advantage. Now that's less and less the case. So Wolfar is definitely back, they're out of the garbage tier, um, but are they S tier? Not quite. I'm gonna put Wolfar also in A tier, because they're situational. Even though Wolfar is strong and can be a mini Tenry, a mini Caesar, or a mini Ragna, if they don't get Groove and be able to use Groove in time, they lose to their counterparts. If the map doesn't have C, they can't kill Golems. If the map doesn't have Flagstone, they can't kill Dragons. It's really, really map dependent these days, and I've been seeing more and more maps built so that Wolfar can't just auto kill whatever he wants. With that, and the fact that everybody played Wolfar, everybody knows how to counter Wolfar, kind of treat him like Sigrid, Wolfar has fallen out of S tier and into A tier. But in terms of ease of use, he's super easy. In terms of repositioning, he can reposition his own units. He has some assassination potential, some backdoor potential, and a lot of utility. So we definitely will put him in A tier. Alright, now the twins are a very magical animal. They are super situational. Super duper situational. We've seen recently that the twins can be as horrible as Merciful, or as amazing as Yoda, depending on the map. But they are really map dependent, and pulling off a good twins cheese where you put fire next to the stronghold and then kill it with knights, that's hard to do. That's hard to do well except on a perfect twins map. Your opponent will know exactly what you're going for because you literally have one play. And to position around the fire without killing yourself or splitting your own forces or making your own attack impossible is really high level. For this reason, I'm going to put the Twins in B tier because they are not easy to use, their utility is very limited despite their groove. In terms of assassination, they can't do it, and they can't really backdoor either. They have one cheese strat that is very, very telegraphed. So that's why they're in B tier, but I would recommend banning them on a map that has good twin cheese. Watch out for good twin cheese on maps and ban twins on those maps, especially against a good cheeser, opener, or twins player. Otherwise, you can leave them alone. They're basically a clever merciful. Alright, we've been talking a lot about Sigrid. Sigrid has been getting a lot of flack lately. The reason is she's super duper telegraphed. You can just not put golems near her, not put dragons near her, and you're fine. I think she's gonna be a little bit better in Groove of War 5 than she was in Groove of War 4. I think she's gonna be better because her groove will allow her to rush, and the meta favors more exposed strongholds. So a medium charge groove that lets you kill one unit is really, really good because you can peel off a golem and attack that exposed stronghold really early on. I think we're going to see some Sigrid rushes and I think they're going to be really amazing. So I'm going to make her the queen of C tier, but I'm going to put her in C tier nonetheless. Even though she's really easy to use, she's really easy to counterplay. We've never seen a good Sigrid in a very long time and even though the meta is shifting in her favor, I think she's still gonna come off weak. I would never ban her unless you see a Sigrid rush on a map, then ban her on that map, but otherwise, it's not worth the risk. There are much greater cheese threats, there are much greater overall threats. I would not ban a Sigrid. Similarly, Elodie is in much the same boat. We're gonna see more Elodies, but she's a slow charger, and slow chargers just got nerfed by the map meta. She's kind of cool in the golem meta, but because she's slow, it'll take forever to get her groove, and then you can play around it. Ultimately, I've got to say she's C tier. We're going to see some Elodies. I bet there are a few Elodie lovers who will use Elodie, but she's still C tier. And the final C tier sister, Dark Mercia, same thing. She's a bit fun for some casual games and some assassination plays with her groove, 
but ultimately she's just too avoidable, ignorable, and she's slow charge, which is gonna hurt her in the current meta. I'd like to see some cool kills with Dark Mercia, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Alright, now, Sedge is weird. Sedge is probably the most powerful commander in the game in certain situations. Sedge wants to tear apart your army and rip it limb from limb and pick it off. So let's talk about ease of use. Ease of use, Sedge is not easy to use. Sedge is really, really hard to use. You have to know a lot of math. You have to be very good at repositioning. You have to keep a lot of things in mind. It's almost like playing a mini Caesar. I would say playing Sedge well is similar to playing a good Caesar assassination with all the repositioning you have to do. And in fact, Sedge might, although Sedge's skill floor is lower than Caesar's, you could play Sedge without being as good as you need to be to play Caesar. I say still, uh, Sedge's skill ceiling, the best possible Sedge you could play, might even be harder to play than Caesar with all you have to keep in mind. That being said, you know, Sedge is not easy to use, but has great repositioning, great assassination, no back door, but they kind of don't need it because their utility is they kill your army. So they don't really need to backdoor. Ultimately, I will give Sedge S tier with a caveat. I will say Sedge is the weakest of S tier. They don't have the ease of use of Ragna, or the come from behind of Ragna, or the assassination burst of Caesar. They don't have Nuru's cheese, if Nuru can even get it. If Nuru can't get it, then she's on par with Sedge. Or Koji's assassination and reliability, you know, they don't have Vesper's awesome cheese. Sedge doesn't insta-win you the game. But Sedge is hard to use, but rewarding, and a really good Sedge player on an army where you have to fight Sedge is army, where you can't ignore Sedge's army, it's not like Sedge is here and you're over there. No, you're both in the same place. Sedge will start eating you alive once he has Groove. Alright, so Emmerich and Greenfinger. Unfortunately, for reasons I don't want to go into, the best Greenfinger player will probably not be in GW5, and I haven't seen anybody else pick this guy up. For that reason and that reason alone, I'm gonna have to drop him all the way to B tier just because I don't think anybody knows what they're doing with Greenfinger. And that's actually a really big deal. If nobody knows how to play Greenfinger well, they're not gonna be able to use their full power. I know they have some amazing plays and amazing trades and amazing cheeses, and they're at medium charge, which is going to be really great. I bet we're going to see some green fingers surprise everybody and dominate. But I wouldn't ever ban them, because almost nobody will play that green finger. You're not going to be able to predict it. It's going to be a surprise. And for that reason, I'm putting them in B tier, just because there won't be enough good green fingers out there. But power level wise, power level wise, I would put green finger in A tier maybe even with the potential to be better once we see some good green fingers. Now, Emmerich... Emmerich is a tough call. I'm on the fence. I'm honestly on the fence about Emmerich and Tenry for very, very good reason. Here's the problem, guys. We have not seen really great Emmerich play since 1.3. The best Emmerich players were like Regems and Zeronix and folks from 1.3 where you had to play with Pikes. That was Emmerich's golden age. You had pikes, and you had mages, and Emmerich was the master of this. Emmerich isn't easy to play. Emmerich plays completely differently than any other commander. It's all about territory and slow playing, and slow playing is hard to do on the clock. The 45 minute clock being played in Groove of War 5 might give an Emmerich player enough time to get the territory they need, but still, it's gonna be slow. So if you don't know what you're doing with Emmerich, you probably don't want to pick Emmerich. And if you're not up against a veteran player who was here and around in 1.3, you're probably not going to be fighting a strong Emmerich. So, like Greenfinger, it's a powerful commander, but you're probably not going to see that power. You're probably not going to be able to use that power. I wouldn't pick, I wouldn't ban. There are going to be a few amazing Emmerichs, maybe Zeronix and Red Jams, if you really don't know what to expect. Like, crazy good players, you might want to ban Emmerich, but otherwise, like... Nah, there are scarier things that people are more likely to be good with. Alright, we've got Tenry. Tenry is very much a one-trick pony, but you don't know what that trick is. Tenry could very easily surprise you with a nuke and wipe out your stronghold if Tenry can get a Treb, but Trebs aren't around in this meta. 
Okay, so she can remove a unit on one side of you and attack you on that side. But who cares? What are you attacking with? Okay, she can reposition a knight and crit your stronghold. Where's your follow-up? At slow charge, Tenry is a little bit weak. She used to be the most powerful commander in the world, but her utility is just reduced by the fact that she can pretty much only do this once. So, she has some cool tricks, and you're not sure what it's going to be when she gets grooves, so you have to watch out for all of them. But she's only going to be able to do one thing. Kill one unit, or go for your commander, or go for your stronghold, but it will be a little bit telegraphed. The, the only thing that won't be telegraphed is a commander kill, maybe, because there's a lot of options, but, like, if she's going for your stronghold, you can kind of see what her options are. So, you know, ultimately, I don't know where to put Tenry. I'm gonna put her in A tier, because ease of use, she's not hard to use, since her groove is a single thing. Um, in terms of assassination, she has good assassination, she has good backdoor, she can reposition one of her own units, and she does a great utility. And because she does have some cheeses at her disposal, even with Trebs gone, Trebs are gone, Trebs are gone. Yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't accept A tier for her while Trebs are gone. With Trebs being hard banned in this meta, that's most of Tenry right there. She's going down to B tier. Maybe play her on some Tread maps, maybe ban her on some Tread maps. I wouldn't worry too much about Tenry. There's going to be one Tenry cheeser at least. People are going to play Tenry, don't get me wrong. But once again, it's so weird and gimmicky, that's not going to be the thing to go for unless you suddenly start seeing a lot of them for some reason. Okay, Mercia. Um, Mercia, Mercia, Mercia. Because of the groove change, Mercia's probably going to be good again. But she doesn't have assassination, she doesn't have backdoor. She's easy to use if you play Golem Mercia, but to play Mercia really well is a little bit harder. She has great utility, heals her whole army. Because she matches every category and because the current meta now favors um, reasonable charge speeds again, like I, it doesn't favor anybody, I just means it doesn't punish you for being fast charge speed. Um, I'm going to put Mercia back in A. She used to be one of the stronger commanders, maybe like top six-ish? So, you know, not the strongest, but up there, sort of. I think she's going to be up there again. Not very high, but somewhere up there. She's reliable, she's good in a golem fight, and since we're going to see a lot more pikes, and a lot more knights, and a lot more golems, yeah, that, that sounds like a Mercia game. Alright, Merciful, I don't even have to say it. His groove gives him negative benefit. It hurts him. Just F tier. F tier. Alright, so let's go over all these tier lists to make sure we didn't miss anything. Ryota is perma banned, and you have four other bands to use in Groove of War 5. I would always ban Ragna against new players, maybe Koji as well, because everybody knows how to play them, and they're super easy. You want to ban Caesar against anyone who could use Caesar well. Um, because Caesar is really powerful, but kind of sucks if you don't know what you're doing. So maybe don't ban him against people who don't know Caesar. Um, Vesper is probably a good ban against high-level players who have played a couple Vesper games. Because there's some Vesper cheeses that can be very strong, very scary. And even if you stop the cheese, she can still trade into you. Sedge is good all around. You probably want to ban Sedge off of Sedge mains. And maybe a couple people who you don't think... Um, is worth spending a ban on another one of these because Sedge is probably the strongest dueling commander out right now. Nuru is weird. If the map doesn't have a Treb, I wouldn't ban her. She probably will suck, especially if Ragna's in there. But if Ragna's banned and if Valder gets banned, if the Nuru counters are all banned, maybe Nuru becomes playable just because of her utility. I don't know. She's weird. She's weird. I, I think she's the least ban worthy in this group unless there are trebs. Then we get into here. Ban Valder on a Valder map. If it's not a Valder map, you probably don't have to worry much. Um, ban Wolfar on a Wolfar rush map, but until Spacefront figures out how to do that, don't worry about Wolfar. You probably don't ever want to ban Mercia, but she's a decent pick if you don't know what else to do. And for some reason, all of these things get banned. Hard to play. Hard to play. Hard to play and all situational and cheesy and weird. Um, 
super cheesy, but without Trebs, kind of useless, although she rises to A tier when you have Trebs. Will probably suck, but we will see some Sigrids and Elodies, I bet, maybe even a DM or two. Um, probably a Rush strat with Sigrid. Elodie will try to steal a Golem, and DM will try to kill you. None of them are ban-worthy, and Merciful sucks. Well, that's the tier list. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, right! Sturm from Advanced Wars! What was his groove again? I, I don't remember. Um, what was that groove again? Oh, yeah, screw that. Let's just remove him from the game. All right, that was the Groove of War 5 tier list. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, and I hope this helps and is something of an accurate prediction for Groove of War 5 picks and bans. I'm excited to see how accurate my guesses were. I was pretty spot on last time, although we underestimated Vesper a little bit, who ended up being a stronger pick in higher level play. Uh, and again, I do think that there are some potential powerhouses here, just I don't think people will be able to use them. I will say, however, I do predict that Emmerich will rise to S tier within the final four or so matches of the tournament. I think Emmerich is going to be a lot better than we suspect. And there might be one or two others that change position when we get into the final groupings. But early on, he's going to be B tier. Alright, that's all for this video, and welcome to Wargroove.